I, I can't even begin to tell someone that hasn't through hiked before what it feels like to do what you love every single day, day to day. You talk about the freedom that you feel on trail. A lot of the time I feel like I don't have that much freedom. I'm not going to lie. You're confined to the trail. You can't just get up and go wherever you want. You got to keep walking. You have strict deadlines. You have to be at a certain place at a certain time or else you're going to run out of food. I think like the, the hard truth we'll say about the PCT, especially nowadays, is that How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Trail Tales. My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a huge... I'm, I'm just a huge hiking nerd, dude. And every single week on this podcast, I chat with other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. And uh, speaking of experiences on the trail, our guest this week has a lot of that. And he's going to be getting even more of it this year. Uh, he, he's he's going to be getting a lot of miles in. We'll just say that. We're going to talk all about it. And it's going to be a great episode. This is going to be his third time on the show, but his first time on camera. Um, that being said, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with him already. And if you're not, then, dude, go subscribe to his channel. And speaking of subscribing, uh, dude, subscribe to this channel. We're, we're inching up there. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers on the Trail Tales YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much to everyone who's already subscribed. I feel like I always ask for subscribers, but I don't thank the ones that already have. So thank you. And, um, if you're watching on YouTube, but you want to listen on audio instead, for some reason, um, if you're that guy, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Spotify, Apple podcasts, Stitcher, any podcast app out there, this show is on it. Uh, just type in trail tales and you'll find it. Um, and with that said, I think uh, I think we're gonna start the episode. I'm so excited to have back on for his third time, Mr. Frozen from Outdoor Adventures. What's going on, dude? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Thanks for having me on again. You're not sick of dude. me yet, I guess, huh? <laughs> dude, no. I so I can't believe this is your third. I knew I knew you had been on the show before, obviously, but for some reason, I kind of forgot how many times <laughs> it had been. <laughs> um, your third episode. That's so crazy, man. I, I just appreciate it. I appreciate you coming back oh, my three times, dude. And and what an exciting time. Exciting yeah. and nerve-wracking time for you right now, dude. I know exactly. Absolutely. I've been through this. Like I, I, a lot of people listening and watching have as well. You're, you know, you're you're about to start another through hike. We're gonna say it. you're gonna, you're about to start the PCT. Yeah. Um <laughs> and okay, you don't have to say your exact start date. Um probably don't want that public but what like what's the rough time frame that you're mid, gonna be mid starting? april mid april, mid -April. Going out. yeah okay so you're in that that weird time here because as the recording as of the recording right now it's um late february we'll say you're in that weird time where it's like it's getting close like you can you can feel it but at the same time it's still a few months away and so you're, i'm assuming you're still working and you've got all these other responsibilities you're not totally ready to just drop everything and head out there but it's also i'm sure you're thinking about it every day what a weird what a weird time dude it is yeah and like next week uh wednesday i'm actually telling my boss to expect my resignation letter so i'm giving oh. them like a full month and stuff so yeah well, it's if gonna your be boss weird. is a trail tales listener they might know nah, a little bit earlier I doubt or, if it, they, yeah. or if they watch your <laughs> if they watch your channel you've been talking about it for a while on there that's actually kind of funny dude because like um I announced on my YouTube channel before the PCT, like well before I told work and just under the assumption that they wouldn't find out and they didn't, but there's always that chance, you know, <laughs> there's always, but if you're going to be leaving anyways, I guess, I don't know, not that you want to burn any bridges, but no, it's kind yeah, of funny. It's actually it? been a good job to work for, for the, since I got back from the AT, I've been at the same place. So yeah, no hard feelings kind of thing. Yeah, no, for sure. What a, what a crazy time. How does, how does this pre- PCT time compare to the pre AT time, which is a very general question. Just go, go with that where you will. Yeah, sure. Um, so the AT, I didn't feel like I did a lot of planning. You know, I maybe got like the first week down where I'm going for resupplies, maybe hostel stays. And then, you know, I just kind of showed up and <laughs> just hiked it to Maine. <laughs> but, you know, the PCT, I think is a little different where there's some logistics and planning and you know, coming back for family birthdays and all this, these things that, oh. you know, yeah, like my son's going to turn two while I'm on the trail. So I'm planning to fly back for him and kind of my wife's and my birthday's all in the, within the week. So it's just been a little weird for logistics, you know, planning out the Sierras to try to get there as close to June as I can. It's just, uh, 
I'm excited and nervous and I, I just, I just want to get on the trail. Just yeah. you know how it is. Yeah. That's, that's how it is, dude. Like in those months leading up, I mean, maybe it's different for other people and, and definitely if anybody watching has any, uh, feedback on this, like how you feel like leading up to a big through hike like this, then leave it in the comments. But, um, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's such a weird mix of like excitement and nerves. Yeah. It's, it's, a. Uh, it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately as I think back to like the pre AT and the pre PCT experiences that I had. But, um, before we get any further into the PCT stuff, dude, why don't we just take a step back? You've been on the show a couple of times, but it has been a while. And so, um, we've got a lot of new listeners since then. And so for those that haven't gone back and listened to every single episode, which is probably most of you, although I do know that a lot of people do that. I get your emails and your comments and stuff. It's funny, but, um, just an introduction to yourself. Talk about who you are, what you hiked. Uh, talk about talk about your your YouTube, dude. Who is who is frozen? Yeah, um, I'm just your average dad now. I guess I've had uh, I got married. <laughs> your average and, dad is not yeah <laughs> through hiking. I'll say that. Yeah. No, you're you're a lot more badass of a dad than your average dad. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I started hiking about actually this will be the 10 year anniversary of the YouTube channel. I just realized that. Wow. Damn. Um, dude. Yeah, and it was crazy because the fifth year of YouTube, I actually hiked the Appalachian Trail as a through hike. I uh, kind of got bit by the through hiking bug on in Minnesota on the Superior Hiking Trail, and it led me to the AT. And uh, you know, I promised myself on the AT that you know, let's save up five years and get some money together, and now PCT. So I'm yeah. just uh, I'm just a person that loves to be outside, loves to backpack. I wish I would have got into it sooner, you know. Yeah, man. Dude, 10 years on YouTube. That's insane. Like, yeah. And you already passed me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair, it's a little different. But um, I remember we probably talked about this already on one of our... I have no idea what we talked about in our previous episodes. Do not recall anything. So if someone just recently listened to those and then they're like, you already asked... It, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, I definitely remember watching you a little bit before I even started my channel. Because you were one, you were one of the OG ones for sure, dude. Which is crazy. Like you and 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 you know we can we don't have to get into who was the first or whatever, but like you and Syntax seventy seven, um, Shug, you know oh, yeah. those are the guys that I think of. Um, but anyways, dude. So PCT coming up. We've talked a little bit about some of the pre pre uh, pre trail feelings, I guess. Um, I don't know. You said you're excited and you're nervous. Let's start. Let's kind of start with those two things. Let's break it down a little bit. What are you most excited for? I'm excited to experience the absolute freedom that is through hiking again. Um, it's I, I I can't even begin to tell someone that hasn't through hiked before what it feels like to do what you love every single day, day to day, um, to the point where you know it becomes your nine to five job. You know what I mean? And just something that I look forward to doing every single day, wake up in a different place. I think that's what the biggest draw for me was. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not in a set schedule. You just you know, walk until you're tired, go to sleep, do it again the next day, eat whatever you want because you're going to lose the weight. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a big thing. That's a big yeah. thing for sure. And uh, I just I just am looking forward to just being in that mindset where there's nothing really to worry about except for what the weather is going to do that day. You know, and how mm-hmm. how bad your knees hurt. I guess it could, could yeah. be a thing. But yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's an ex- very very exciting feeling to start this again from scratch. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's uh, how do you feel about getting a little philosophical here? Because something let's you do said it. there. Yeah, let's go. I, I I usually struggle when this kind of stuff comes up because, in, in case the listeners didn't already know this, I am quite stupid to be honest. But um, we're gonna try to get philosophical here. So. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit because I do agree with everything you just said there. But, um, well, maybe maybe a little bit not. So you talk about the freedom that you feel on trail. And, and I find myself, whenever I'm like, you know, kind of sitting at work or not through hiking, um, especially in the winter too, it's cold out, you're kind of stuck inside a little bit. I find myself like daydreaming and kind of fantasizing about through hiking. And you kind of romanticize it. And I always am drawn to that like freedom aspect. Like you're just on the trail. All you have to do is walk. It's super easy. But 
on my or not super easy. You you know what I mean though. Just like the the freedom aspect right. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, but then when I'm actually out there, a lot of the time I feel like I don't have that much freedom. I'm not gonna lie. Like you're you're confined to the trail. You can't just get up and go wherever you want. You got to keep walking. You have strict deadlines. Um, you have to be at a certain place at a certain time, or else you're gonna run out of food. You're dependent on water, especially on the PCT, as we're going to talk about in a little bit here. Um, there are a lot more constraints than I think I find myself <laughs> remembering when I'm fantasizing about it off trail. Um, I don't know. I don't even really have a question, I guess. Just what do you what do you <laughs> think about that? Because that's just the first thing that popped into my mind when when you mentioned the freedom thing there. The, the, the type two fun immediately comes to mind. Like you could be doing something in the moment on the trail and just like, man, I'm never coming back here ever again. But then you mm -hmm. like come back to yourself and you, you think in your head for, you know, three months after, two, two weeks after, whatever. And you're like, that was the best thing I ever did. You know what I mean? It's just like, what? You hated yeah. that trail. But I, I don't know, there's just something about just, just just completing something like that and just saying, yeah, I did that. You know? Yeah, man. It's, it's so weird. Like I've been thinking about, um, I've been away from the Northeast for a while now. I was there over the summer a little bit, but, um, I haven't been back since the end of July basically. And, you know, that's my home. That's where I grew up and everything. So I've just been like kind of daydreaming about like the Northville Placid Trail and the Long Trail and these other trails up there that I've done. And I even, I caught myself like, being like, oh, maybe I'll hike the Northfield Plastic Trail again. And then I realized, I was like, wait a minute. I fucking hated that trail, dude. <laughs> I, or, I, I, it's not even the trail that I hate. I just, I had a tough experience on it. Like, right. it wasn't fun. <laughs> I'm glad I did it. But it's the type type two thing you were talking about there. Like, I'm mm -hmm. glad I did it, but <laughs> it wasn't a great experience in the moment. And so, and then so I, I, I've been struggling with this a lot lately, if you couldn't tell. Um, so weird, dude. Um, okay. So, but there is something to say about the freedom and everything, obviously. How about things you're nervous for? Let's break some of these down. Cause remember you're talking to someone who did most of the PCT. Um, and you know, we have a very similar background, which we can get into as well in terms right. of hiking and, 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 and all that stuff. So yeah. What are some of the things that you're nervous about going into the trail? I think the number one thing I'm nervous about right now is I have a, I have a set time I have, so I have mid-April to the end of August, which is a little bit outside the normal box of the PCT time frame. I plan on, I'm going to get to the Sierra, I think about maybe one to two weeks, a little too early, too early. Everybody talks about, you know, Ray Day and June 15th and, you know, that's the best time to hike the PCT. I'm not going to have that because I'm not going to be able to finish it if I take that long to get in there. You know what I mean? So I have to mm -hmm. be there like mid to late May. And I think yeah. that's, you know, I checked the, the snow. I'm sure you did it whenever you did your, your hike, your, the trail report from like, I think it's halfway anywhere, a post holder or something. Yeah. And I'm just watching the line go up toward the average. We were at a low snow year and now we're at a kind of almost an average snow year. Uh, but it's supposed to be rainy and hot. So I don't know if that is going to translate into whatever weather pattern that will make out there. But you know, if it's anything like, hopefully it's not like last year where they yeah. got like 300% the Dude, normal snowfall amount. I'm I'm sure you've seen the videos and talked to people that hiked through the Sierras last year. Like <clears throat> when I went back to try to finish up my PCT miles last year, I was kind of in a bubble of folks who had gone through the Sierras. Most people probably didn't is my understanding last year or they skipped them and then went back or did something mm. like that. But a lot of the people I was around were kind of, a little bit behind because they had gone through and dude, some of the fucking stories. It sounded awful. I don't think I would have done it to be completely honest last year. Waking but, up at um, 3 a.m. and just, just to get the hard snow. Yeah. Yeah. And like nobody being out there and right. like re the river crossings, like the Sierras, yeah. the Sierras are amazing and you should be pumped for them, but am. they were very difficult too. Mm -hmm. And I did it with no snow worries whatsoever. No mm -hmm. ice axe, no micro spikes, only hiked on snow a couple times and it was very brief, not nothing dangerous. Um, and it was already like pretty hard and a lot of some long food carries too. Right. And bear I canister. cannot yeah. in the bear canister. Dude, <laughs> I cannot imagine all of that amplified with the crazy snow and they got last year. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you, dude. And, and everybody else, like I, 
I hope it's a low snow year. Um, I've been, my stakes are a little bit lower at this point than yours, but I've been watching the snow levels up in Washington because I'd like to go back and finish my PCT miles up there, Mm. but I don't want to go back at the end of summer like I did the last two times I tried to go up there. Fires, yeah. I think I, you think I would have learned my lesson by now. And so I'm really trying to go earlier than that. And so, you know, I like to go as early as I can without having to do crazy snow stuff. But so I, anyways, I'm, I'm watching the snow levels too, a little bit. Um, yeah. Valid thing to be concerned about for sure. Um, are there any other things that kind of jump out that you're maybe not even nervous, but just like get, get you a little jittered, like something kind of different than the AT, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, on the AT, you're you're in a town every, what, three days, two days, you know, there's just all these town stops, and, you know, now there's, you know, eight to 10, 15 mile hitches that you have to do every, what, four to five days, I think, is maybe the average out there. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm honestly, so I have to, I have to vlog, or I'm going to vlog, but I also have to vlog this hike to maintain the budget to be able to hike this trail. I'm about, I think, $400, $300 short a month. Um, right now, just because of all the inflation, you know, and the fact of the, the fact that I'm gonna be in California with all their inflation stuff. Yeah, PCT um, was not cheap in 2022, and yeah, it's only gone up since. Especially then, so. for <laughs> vloggers, where you know you need to stay in town for at least you know four to six hours just to you know charge your battery banks and your camera stuff up. So I guess mm-hmm. I'm a little worried about that. I mean, I'm sure that'll come naturally, you know, within the first couple weeks. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't even have my battery banks picked out yet. There's really nothing. <laughs> out well, you there that kind of interests me yeah i got a, i got a couple months the um the resupply and the town logistics definitely are a little bit trickier on the pct um don't let people like scare you either because most of the time it's pretty similar to the at maybe just a little bit further between towns mm-hmm. average but then again you're also hiking more miles than you usually do on the at yeah. so so most of the time it's fine but there just are a few sections, which I'm sure you've researched at this point. It sounds like you're quite prepared where you have to hike some some long sections and maybe you kind of have to like plan a ride ahead of time mm-hmm. or, you know, th- there is some some more logistical complications there. But it's not, you know, it's doable. Obviously, people do it every year. Yeah. So you'll be fine. And then the vlogging thing, adding that in definitely makes it more complicated and for me, it was Wi-Fi. Having access to Wi-Fi was the hardest thing. But are, are, you're probably going to be editing yourself. Yeah. Dude, how the fuck do you do that? This is a yeah, reoccurring theme night on the show. Every before bed, it has to be done. Uh, that day has to be done. And man, edited. the discipline. Yeah. This is a reoccurring thing I say in like every other episode. I'm like, I don't know how the fuck people edit on trail. I don't. So crazy, dude. Um, dude, I remember it. in You've Maine, already done it, so. Yeah. In Maine on the AT... There was that, because I delayed my videos by about a week and a half. And when I got to a week and a half away from Katata, I'm like, I don't have to do shit. I don't have to edit. <laughs> I don't have to upload. I can just wait till I get home, do it on the plane, whatever. And it felt so good to just hike at that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, what are you What are you planning on? Are you, are you, I guess I should say, are you planning on doing anything differently in terms of the vlogging this time around? It could be gear differences scheduling differences just anything at all related to vlogging um any differences at all compared to the at yeah probably take more time out to um, be around people instead of just always hiking alone because i don't feel comfortable and i hate i hate shoving a camera in somebody's face it's just not yeah. right you know what i mean so you know if i like uh my buddy murica he was a ham he loved being on camera so i'm hoping i meet another murica so to speak I'm out sure there you, you know what i mean because it just so adds so much to the atmosphere at that point oh yeah yeah good don't be that guy no never to be fair i very rarely see that um you know every now and again you'll hear stories but i really have never been on trail and just been like freaking <laughs> someone shoving a camera in my face so mm. yeah I would just feel, do people actually do that, dude? I would feel so awkward. Like, yeah, I feel we awkward were, enough just filming myself around. Damn, we were that's stopped crazy. a couple times uh, in New Hampshire and Maine. Just somebody coming south. I forget who it was, what his name was, but he was just, he would just, hey, you got time for a 10 minute interview? I'm like, not really, but go, go, go ahead, dude, I guess. I don't know. Well, at least he asked you first. Yeah, at least he asked you. It's still kind of putting you in an awkward position. I totally get yeah. that. But it's, I feel like that's still a little different than like just straight up filming i don't know but (laughs) um all right so 
How do you feel about water? Because obviously one of the biggest differences between the AT and the PCT is the long ass water carries. Have you thought much about that? Like, how do you feel about that? I did. The first 700 miles before Kennedy Meadows, I'm going to be bringing six liter total water capacity. It just sounds so ridiculous in my head, but I, I remember having times, you know, on the AT even just with a half a liter, you know, at camp. And I'm like, this is not enough. That's barely enough for coffee. I got to have coffee in the morning. You know what I mean? I'm bringing a bidet too. So I need the extra water for that as well. <laughs> You're a bidet so, guy. Huh? I'm a bidet yeah. guy, man. I, I hate TP, man. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. We can it's going to be so heavy. That. That's what, what, 12 <laughs> extra pounds? Yeah, <laughs> dude. 13 yeah, dude. pounds or something? Yeah. That's um, six liters. That's what, I, that's what I brought through the desert. I feel like that was more than most people, to be honest. I feel like most people had four, but I drink a lot. I also cook a lot. Um, and so, I, and obviously, I'm sure you understand that like it's not like every single day you're going to be carrying the six right. liters but yeah. you are gonna have to carry t- <laughs> six I have liters the, the four one liter bottles and then like a, a two liter ever new collapsible bag that i can just exactly leave in the mesh. yeah that's exactly what i did that's yeah. exactly what i did um but then once you get to the sierras you know assuming they're not snowed out still <laughs> you can you'll have plenty of freaking water dude and it changes like that too. It'll be so perfect for you. Was there um, any place that you thought you needed more water than what, just two liters? Is that what you carried through the Sierra and on? Or um, I carried more. I carried. I actually was a little overkill. I went down to five liters in the Sierras, although I very rarely. I don't think I probably ever filled up a full mm-hmm. five liters. Um, most of the time, it was similar to the AT, where it's like I would carry maybe like two actually only carrying like two sometimes less liters on me at any given point maybe a little bit more if i'm although most of the campsites in the sierras i feel like had water pretty accessible but um sorry what was your question how about (laughs) after the sierra what was your like carry capacity after the sierras there was definitely a couple times where i needed all five liters really um there's one time where (laughs) not 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 it's not the norm though it's definitely less frequent than the desert um i remember there was one time and you'll uh, you know you're obviously experienced and competent so you will figure this stuff out ahead of time just even just on far out you'll know but like i remember there was one time um fuck what was the name of that area uh i remembered hat creek um going through the hat creek area in northern california it was it felt like we were just being thrown back in the desert for a solid like day basically and not much water there was like there was eight miles between water sources, which isn't that bad, but it was like a 0.3 off trail, steep downhill kind of thing. And so I just yeah. was like, fuck, I'm just going to bring five liters and just carry through. Um, it was also during a heat wave, which probably made it a lot worse. But um, that was a time. Maybe there was a couple other times where you're going like 10, maybe 10 miles between water sources, but that's fine. It's it's yeah. not as frequent as the Sierras, but it's more frequent than the desert, certainly. Of course, it's going to vary, obviously, year to year a little bit. But generally speaking, I think that's probably what you're going to find. Um, okay. Yeah. How about... How about actually, we might have talked about this before, but I can't remember. Have you done any hiking, like desert out west at all kind of hiking? No. The closest I did was the Grand Canyon over the fall with my dad I'd, but we only I'd did like 12 counts. miles down 12 miles mm. back up which the elevation change was crazy because it's you know just a whole day thing but yeah that's, um, that's the only west coast hiking i've done period actually yeah nice oh so well <laughs> well you're gonna be in for uh you know oh, that's I'm exciting sure. <laughs> i'm sure it's a yeah. little nerve-wracking but that's it exciting is. dude um and you're gonna get to experience everything the west coast literally everything the west coast has to offer well, I shouldn't say literally, but a lot of it. You're going to get the desert. You're going to get the super high mountain Sierra kind of thing. You're going to get, you know, the more forested on fire burn zone, northern California. You're going to get it all. Um, and that's all just in California. Right. But um, where I was going with this question is I was going to ask you about sun exposure. So in the Grand Canyon, I'm sure you had to think about this, but obviously that was a very short hike. How do you feel about the sun exposure, um, especially in the desert? Like, is that you're an East Coaster like me? And so this was something that was of great concern to me before I left uh, to start the PCT. Yeah, but um, I'm okay with it. 
I I don't burn easily, which is great. You know, there's always the risk of cancer and stuff, you know, skin cancer. Um, I did try literally every sun hoodie that's ever been made by every American and Chinese manufacturer on Amazon, <laughs> um, and they all suck. So I, I actually have an REI Sahara, and it works perfectly. Yeah, that's that's what I had, dude. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> still my preferred sun it's, hoodie. It's Don- nice. It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't, you're not feeling like you're overheating. Like in an outdoor research echo, I felt like I was just completely overheating in that thing. Mm. I haven't tried, honestly, I haven't tried any other sun hoodies besides the REI one. You're lucky. Darwin That's... sent me the evolved one, but I haven't tried it yet. I would no. like to try it. It looks nice, but it does look I haven't nice. tried it yet. With the Z Packs um, collab or whatever? Yeah. 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 I, I'll try it um, once it warms up a little bit for sure. But um, yeah. How about like, See, I started about a month later than you did, and so right. my experience in the desert, you know, I, it's, it's funny. The other day, I was hiking with my girlfriend, and we were just doing a day hike, short one, and we were in like a, we're in Hawaii, but it, it, the area we were in was very dry, no trees. It, it it really reminded me of the desert on the PC. I've kept telling her that. She probably <laughs> got sick of hearing me say, like, oh, this is just like the, the desert, but um, it kind of got me thinking because my experience in the desert was kind of brutal because of the late start and how hot it was. Mm -hmm. But on my hike the other day, it was actually like a pretty reasonable temperature. And I was like, this is kind of dope. Like I, I feel like this is very different from like, this is way more enjoyable than it was for me on the PCT when I was hiking through similar conditions. And so I was going to ask like how you were going to be prepared for the heat. And, you know, it kind of goes along with the sun exposure, but I'm honestly not as sure how the. I'm sure you'll get some heat at some point in yeah, the desert I'm sure. towards the end, especially. But seventy like, to eighties in April, so I'm I'm thinking just wake up early, rest during the you know the three the two three o'clock or afternoon, and then start hiking in the evening again. That's yeah. my plan at least for now. I'm sure it'll be modified. Yeah, on a day it to will day. be because that's what everybody says. <laughs> that's what we yeah. said, yeah. and we did sometimes, <laughs> but at one point. I mean, shit, have you ever done, like, straight up, like, I don't just mean, like, a couple miles after dark. I mean, like, straight up hike all night, like, full-on night hike. Have you ever done that before? Yeah, I did. uh, I actually really like, I enjoy night hiking. I've done several nights where I'm doing 20 miles up at my local park because I know it very well. You Mm -hmm. go really slow, but, or a lot slower than usual, but it's it's a lot of fun for me. Yeah, man. Okay, that's good because... If things get really bad, which hopefully they won't, and it, you know, with the later start date, it probably won't be bad. I'm not trying to scare you, but um, nah, worst case, you night. can always, <laughs> yeah, hike at night, which is easy to say. But if you're if you like it, that's good. But what I don't about, love it. <laughs> what about like scorpions, and like rattlesnakes? Are they out at night or? I I only so I I only straight up proper night hiked for four days. Hmm. We did see one at night, yeah. Um, what a rattlesnake! One, one, a rattlesnake, sorry, yeah, yeah, rattlesnake. Mm-hmm. As far as scorpions, dude, someone leave a comment that knows this better than me because this is something I thought about before trail, but like I feel like I never saw any scorpions and I was not thinking about scorpions when I was actually mm-hmm. out there. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. I don't know what to do with those, but um, you know, it's kind of funny. I was a little bit, I was a little bit nervous about rattlesnakes going into the PCT because, you know, you're hiking through the desert. That's like the first thing you think of um, right. when it comes to like wildlife or at least that's where my brain goes. And, you know, I had some close calls on the AT. And so I was kind of nervous about that going into the PCT. I thought it would be worse. But to be honest with you, and again, this is just anecdotal, obviously, it's just my experience, but I kind of felt like rattlesnakes were a bit less of a concern on the PCT, especially in the desert, because I just felt like they were easier to spot than the AT. Because like on the AT, there's a lot of thick brush. Shrub, you know, those timber yeah. rattlers are like mm. kind of dark and they do kind of blend into the leaves and stuff on the ground a little bit. And I feel like on in the desert, at least, you know, the space is just more open. And so, yeah, the snakes are you know, they're a little bit lighter in color. They blend in with the dirt a little bit, but like, I just felt like they were easier to spot than on the... That's really helpful to know them. Yeah, Yeah. and also on the AT, it's so rooty and rocky a lot of the time. The shit, you know, kind of on the trail, your shit you're walking over all the time. (laughs) On the PCT, if there's something laying across the trail, it's usually going to get your attention because that's not the norm. It's very smooth. And so that's something to keep in mind (laughs) as well. So, yeah. 
But I'm sure there's been someone who's had close rattlesnake encounters on the PCT. And then, you know, the further north you go, in Northern California, there was one time where there was one a little bit more tucked away, a little bit harder to see, um, kind of more AT style. But hmm. uh, don't love those things. Don't no. love the rattlesnakes. I've had my fair share of encounters with rattlesnakes, too. Never. I'm never sure fun. you have. In yeah. Pennsylvania, especially, dude, that place is crawling oh, with those yeah. things. We have them everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, okay. If I haven't scared you away from the trail yet, um, no, I'm just joking. So, uh, and, and again, first, I know you're f- familiar with my PCT experience and kind of what happened. Um, I think, like, the, the, the hard truth we'll say about the PCT, especially nowadays, is that it's just very difficult to complete the entire trail in one shot. It's not impossible. It's done every single year still, but I feel like it's relatively safe to say that the majority of people are going to encounter a closure at some point, mostly because of fires, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious... I'm curious, like, yeah, have you thought about this much? And what is your plan, you know, if and unfortunately, likely when you encounter a closure because of, you know, something like this? Yeah, I had to I had to wrap my head around this hike differently compared to the AT. The On the AT, um, for those that aren't familiar what a purist is, uh, a purist through hiker is someone who has to see and be on the trail 100% of the time, no blue blazing, no yellow blazing or hitchhiking. Um, if you hitchhike into a town, you get dropped off, you get picked up and dropped off at the same exact point. Um, so I can honestly say that I've seen every, all 100% of the white blazes, except for one on the AT, which was a closure anyway, we had to go around. Uh, on the PCT, I do understand that I'm going to run into either a fire closure um, I mean, there's nine closures up on the PCT right now. Oh, um, really? Most of them are passable, but there are a few that, you know, there's a reroute. So mm-hmm. my plan is to just hike as much as I can with continuous footsteps from Canada or from Mexico to Canada. But, you know, if there's absolutely no way to do it, then yeah, let's, let's get around, around the closure. It's going to suck, but you know, it, the PCT, yeah. I agree with you. I think it's it's getting harder and harder to hike it every year due to whatever, you know, climate. Yeah. Or just logistically, it's getting harder and harder. Yeah, so. man. Um, I feel like if somebody had asked me that question before the PCT, I would have said the same thing. But I feel like I didn't really actually. How do I say this? Compartmentalize. Yeah. Yeah. Like on the surface. I knew that there was a realistic chance that we were going to have fire closures, but I went into the trail being like, hasn't happened yet. So not going to worry about it. Not going to think about it. Not going to prepare for it. And I really regret that to be honest. And the reason why I'm going (laughs) to kind of harp on this a little bit is because again, we have very similar backgrounds. When I was on the AT, I was the same as you, man. I wanted to see every single part of the trail. Mm -hmm. Um, Did not ever consider skipping would always make sure I got back on at the same place I got off. Um, and Kyle, you and, know that's rare, right? You know, it's it's rare, yeah. really rare to... <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> it, I never, I never, I just thought that's what every thru-hiker did, but apparently did too, that's man. like a 2% thing. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I did too, man. Like, I did too, but that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, about, that's um, a whole other topic. <laughs> um, but like, that was, that was what I did on the AT and no regrets about it, like, that's the way I wanted to hike. That's what I did. That was what made the trail the most fulfilling for me. And even to this day, no regrets about that whatsoever. But um, I really wish I had gone into the PCT with a different mindset. And so I like the answer you gave there. Um, because I think that if I had come to accept the inevitable closures and skipping and reroutes and all this stuff... I think it would have made my experience a little bit more enjoyable when it actually did happen. But on the surface, like I said, I would have said the same thing you just said there. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, (laughs) I know it's going to happen. But but in my head, I didn't actually think about it. And the further we got, 
you know, the further north we got, we even got more than halfway before anything happened. Mm -hmm. The further north I got, the more I convinced myself, like, oh, it's going to be different for us. Like, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. And then, of course, that all came crashing down. And so I hope that, I don't know, you you gave a great answer. and, And I really hope that you do spend some time thinking about that, like, like actually, like seriously thinking about it. Um, and really trying to think about what it's going to be like when we'll say if that happens, because again, it is possible that it won't, but, um, you know, think about what it would be like if that did happen and, and really think about like how that would make you feel and adjust your mindset accordingly so that it doesn't crush you when it does happen. Right. Because, and I appreciate your insight on that, man. It's yeah. Just, because that's what happened yeah. to us. And I know it what, will happen, you know, yeah. it's, it's it, inevitable. Yeah. I think. I think that's probably the right mindset to go in. And if it doesn't happen, then great. But yeah. um, I think it's, I think that's a good mindset, dude. And something that is probably my number one regret from the PCT is that I didn't spend really any time actually thinking about what that would be like. Whoa. Whoops. Um, and so, yeah, man. 2%. Definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 2% With that chance said, of doing a hundred percent PCT. Yeah. Yeah. 2%. And, um, <laughs> And and I'm not going to lie, it also makes you question a little bit, like, it makes you question the purism thing a little bit. It's so weird, dude. I still struggle with this, clearly. Like, because on one hand, I love the idea of hiking the entirety of a trail. Like I said, I don't regret doing that at all on the AT or any other trail I've done. But also, on some trails, it just doesn't work that way, and you're just setting yourself up for failure. What a, It's just, I do not have an answer to this, even to this day. I wish that I did, but... um. I don't know. It's it's tough, but it'll be good, man. Um, Want to talk about something a little bit a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun? Let's uh, oh let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about gear. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what Kyle's gonna say when he says that, but <laughs> yeah, no. He um, <laughs> might catch Flossie peeing on the side of the trail again. <laughs> <laughs> so good, dude. Um, let's talk about gear. So obviously, gonna have some. I assume you're going to have some gear differences. Um, if anybody hiked both the AT and the PC with the exact same gear setup, I will be shocked. I'm sure it's maybe been done, but most people aren't doing that. So you talked about the sun hoodie. I'm assuming you didn't wear a sun hoodie on the AT. No. Um, yeah. So what are some of the other notable gear differences? Um, maybe we'll start, we'll start not even just like, we'll, we'll start with like, pieces of gear you just straight up didn't carry on the AT. I'm not talking about like, oh, I got a sure. new backpack. Does that make sense, kind of? Right, yeah, I yeah. To specify that, yeah. Yeah, well, let's, just excluding all the random gear, like the ice axe, the bear canister, the micro spikes. You know no, that's, I mean? no, that's what I'm talking about, dude, because that shit, <laughs> with maybe the exception of the bear canister, that most people aren't carrying, no one's carrying an ice axe on no. the AT. Can you imagine that you're <laughs> hiking the, up Springer Mountain, you got like an <laughs> ice axe sticking out of your back? <laughs> I did Which, see somebody carrying that early on. They oh, dropped did you? It. They dropped it within the first day or okay. two. Okay, yeah. and I, I'm not trying to be a dick. Like, obviously, like you got to learn somehow. But he had a whole garbage kind of a bag full thought. of ramen noodles. I couldn't believe it. it I met him going up uh, Amicalola Falls, that little eight mile whatever trail, the approach trail. What was your start date on the AT? Uh, February 23rd. Okay, so at least it was winter. It wasn't yeah. like he had like a May start date like me, and he was like climbing up Springer Mountain right. fully <laughs> summer at that point, and he's got like an ice axe hanging out and micro spikes yeah. dangling. <laughs> That's right. funny, but but um, so you're gonna be carrying. I, I'm the, assuming for the Sierras, yeah, for the Sierra, yeah. I actually have the uh, the ice, or all you, uh, for those that are watching on YouTube, the ice axe for that green one that Camp Corsa right behind me. Uh, bear canisters right behind that, and I've I've actually used micro spikes quite a bit because i used to do a lot of winter hiking mm-hmm. um until i found out that i hated it so <laughs> i still have I them do around too, man <laughs> yeah it sucks my feet i get fucking too cold. hate it like it's it's too cold in the morning i don't want to wake up i'll just stay in my hammock all day you know what dude I mean? this is actually very vindicating to hear you say this <laughs> as as someone who's like very experienced very accomplished and has been doing it for a long time because i feel like there's so many people especially up in like new hampshire in the white mountains for instance uh, dude i yeah. know so many people that are just hardos that are just going up mount washington in the middle of the fucking winter yeah like syntax yeah. and like and like <laughs> i'm just like i don't want to do that that sounds i don't no. i don't like it. i don't like winter hiking i really no, don't anything under like 20 degrees i'm out you know what I and mean? it makes I'm, me I'm feel not. like a baby sometimes because like there's lots of people that 
you know, I can kind of hang with in terms of what they're doing in the summer. And then all of right. a sudden winter comes around, I'm sitting on the couch and they're <laughs> freaking ascending Mount Washington in February. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to do man. that. So, <laughs> so good for you, but yeah. you got the, you got the micro spikes, you got the, uh, the ice axe, the bear can, how about like de- more desert stuff? I guess we'll say, um, we're just, we're just doing a gear breakdown, dude. You got the sun hoodie. You got more water capacity than you did on the AT, I'm assuming. Don't tell me you had six liters capacity on the AT. No, I only Nobody. had two. Well, I had yeah. the ever new bag. I guess I had four, technically, but I never used it. I carried yeah. literally, on the AT, I carried a half a liter with me all the way to Maine. Isn't that crazy? There were streams dude. every four miles. It was ridiculous. You're going to be looking back on those days yeah. quite fondly when you're in the middle of a 20-mile water carry in the desert. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to bring a hat on this trip. I never really wore hats before, like a brim hat. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to do one of them, uh, those like wide brim, like, what are they called? Uh, I can't think I know of what the you name. Mean. Yeah, like, I like the, uh, like the a, sun hat. Not a cowboy hat, but like. Yeah, just, I look just, ridiculous, yeah. so I didn't want to do that. But, <laughs> um, Most people do, to be fair, in those. <laughs> yeah, and then this is, this is going to be the first big hike in a tent, too. I hammock camp the entire AT, so been trying to for the past five years now i've been trying to figure out how to tent camp because literally i had like three nights in a tent up to the point Damn. where you know the 10 years was spent in a hammock <laughs> so <laughs> that i'm glad you mentioned change. that yeah dude because that was that's a huge change yeah. and i feel like you're even known as like a hammock guy a bit on yeah. youtube and stuff like um i see people referencing your videos a lot when people are discussing like hammocks and stuff online and that's a big change, dude. And I was the I was the same way. I probably wasn't as smart with hammocks as you were, uh, or knowledgeable before the PCT. But I, you know, I was primarily a hammock person. Although I I did start using a tent a few years leading up to the P a few years before I did the PCT, just on like my weekend trips and stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm to kind of get used to it. Yeah. Okay, dude, you're too smart for the. You're you're gonna crush it, man. You're, you're gonna crush it. Um, yeah, I even had to change my entire logo because it had a hammock in it. I have a ten in it now. Oh no <laughs> so, way! Really? Yeah, yeah. I had to oh, hire somebody to change the logo. We gotta see this. No <laughs> freaking way. I want to see like a before and after. Can you send me like a before and after for sure. that to put yeah. up on the screen? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I see it now, dude. That is so good. You got it. <laughs> I wonder. Do you think anybody would have noticed? I don't know if people noticed. I'm assuming. But I don't know. I have I have a new logo when I come back with both. That it was a <laughs> subscriber that actually had had uh, some decent skills oh, nice. and he edited it. It was great. Yeah. Nice, dude. It looks like a great logo. I love it. Yeah. Um, I like it. What uh what tent do you have? I have the the Plex Solo from Z Packs. And I haven't like so I had the Plex Amid, which was the model before that, and mm-hmm. I had a whole bunch of issues packing it up, uh, condensation. And they, with this one, it, the, the, the walls are steeper, so the condensation like runs right out, and it's like dry every morning. I was pretty amazed about the changes. That's the same tent I use, dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which, well, I started with the Gossamer Gear tent. Right. And then um, Z-Pack sent me the Plex Solo halfway through, and I switched. And I, and I love it. Like, I'm not, you know, Z-Packs are paying me $100,000 to say that, but even if they were <laughs> only too. paying me 80000 <laughs> I would still be saying, no, I'm I'm joking. They're not paying me shit. They sent me a tent. I ripped the zipper in the first day, but I oh love it. it. It is a great. It is a great tent, and it's oh, the don't lightest. Don't tell tent. me that. <laughs> no, I I patched it up, and I have been using it ever since. And like I genuinely, I'm I'm fucking around, so you probably can't tell if I'm being serious. I I genuinely do love that tent, and we'll be using it. I I brought it again last year when I went back out. Yeah. Um, it is. It's so light, and it's a good tent. Like I like plenty the of space footprint. for one person. Yeah, like everybody raves about the duplex, but I like being able to fit into the tight spaces. Oh, dude, you know, not take up room. I guess is the big thing. You, you get, dude. You you get me. You freaking get me. I feel the exact same way. Like, and don't get me wrong, the the duplex is is a great tent and yeah, it's super for light sure. for how big it is. But yeah, like two doors, yeah, I would much prefer the smaller Plex Solo over the duplex because yeah. there will be times, especially on your start date, you know, right in the middle of. The bubble there, very popular time to start the PCT. There will be times where, a lot of times probably, where you get to a campsite, it's packed the fuck out, and you might have to, it will be nice to have that smaller footprint, 100%. So, Did you um, you put the magnetic toggles that they came out with on yours? I don't... To tie the doors back? I don't think that they had those when I got the tent. Oh, okay. 
Or or if they did, no, I did not. That yeah. that that sounds kind of nice though because it's very the door nice. the door does get unrolled a it's, little bit I hate, sometimes. I hate the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. magnets are just <laughs> just attach them real quick. Oh yep. shit! I'm n- I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit out of the loop right now because. Dude, it's like it's like thing. an extra three grams. I think once you cut oh, off the old toggles, never mind it's that. like no, it's a hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's too heavy. <laughs> no, it's a hundred percent worth it just for the simplicity. I'm trying to find like a picture of it or something. That's cool. Yeah, Z packs. Where you at, dude? Send me another one. Um, <laughs> shameless. Well, they're not shipping it. You actually have to do the mod yourself. They sell the toggles. Oh, but yeah. Oh, okay. You just stick them on and cut off the old ones. It's pretty self. I don't know, three easy. grams, dude. Yeah. That's three extra grams of weed that, that you could throw in your pack. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> just joking. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have to check that out, though. Um, shit, what other difference, like big gear differences uh, between the two trails? Other I'm trying than, to you think. know, the sleeping pad and stuff. I mean, there's not a lot. I mean, Oh, I'm going with a frame backpack this time compared to a frame oh. list. You're going back over to the dark side. Yeah. I feel like carrying two pounds of battery banks and 12, 12 pounds of water and then mm. another two pounds for... I just feel like it's a bad idea for me. I'm That's a fair. dude, you know? That's fair. Um, I, I was definitely pushing it. Going through the Sierras in particular, I was pushing it with my frameless pack. With I can just, imagine. Just a long food carry and a bear canister. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you know, after a day or a day and a half, it's fine because you eat down that food. But like, th- I remember the day the day I went into the Sierras, like hiking up out of Kennedy Meadow South. <laughs> fuck it, I didn't, I didn't, I hadn't figured out how to best pack the bear can yet either, and so I had it like loaded up with food, which was a bad idea because you just have a huge weight on the very top of your pack. Right. Yeah. I'm so not it was doing just that. hanging off. Yeah. Don't, which again with a frame was, or sorry, a framed pack, it might be a little bit better, but, um, I don't know what, what pack, what pack are you going with? Don't tell me it's hyperlight. Don't tell it. Don't say it. No, I won't. I won't do hyperlight. Okay. Um, okay. that's a, that's a light AF, uh, full suspension curve 40. Oh, okay. Interesting. But I plan on using my like regular food bag, my like the Cuban fire or Dyneema, I guess. <laughs> people are calling it now <laughs> uh i plan on like and then packing it up i guess at night the bear canister and then putting all the stuff back in the regular food bag in the morning you're too smart dude i'm telling you is that what like, you did that's what i didn't figured do at out. first and that's what i figured out exactly okay, yeah, yeah. i don't want to be off balance no you're you're dude you're, you're gonna be so solid for this i'm excited man i, I can't so. wait to i watch feel like videos. i'm so unprepared man i don't know well but you know this like you already mentioned it once with that guy carrying the ice axe on the AT. You're going to get out there and like, there's going to be people a lot more unprepared than you. Well, that's um, why I actually, I joined, I don't know if you did this before your hike, but you joined the Facebook cr- groups yep. just so you can feel better about yourself because people are asking like <laughs> solar panels and they're asking you, I mean, it's not anything bad. They legit don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We, but sh- like, we shouldn't, you know, I don't, I don't want to get The amount of solar panels and bear canisters talking on the AT face group. You know yeah, I mean? just Facebook groups. Just oh, okay. It's I fun to laugh fine. a little bit. It's yeah. fun to laugh a little bit. Um, yeah. As long as we acknowledge, or I'll speak for myself anyway. I imagine you were probably the same way though, because I feel like everybody goes through this. When you first start, dude, I was bringing tons of goofy shit, and so oh, me too, absolutely. I, I've earned the right to laugh at people yeah. that are bringing goofy shit because I did it. Mm-hmm. I did it for sure. Yeah. Um, and you got to learn, man. You got to learn. Mm-hmm. And that, that same guy asking about the solar panel in the AT Facebook group today. Yeah, that was me 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Dude, I get it. Next year, he's going to he's gonna triple be laughing crown. about that same bull. Yeah, maybe <laughs> next year he's going to be doing the count of your triple crown. <laughs> his, his trail name's uh, Solar Panel, but um, <laughs> so good, dude. Um, how have we not met yet? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you, were, you weren't at Trail Days. You were, at, you were on... No. The PCT during my their trail days that I went to last year. Yeah. It was I don't know what PCT days is like, but it felt so primal just to be <laughs> out in the woods. There's there's somebody brought an entire pig. They were spit roasting the pig. And they were like, uh there were these drums and stuff, and everybody was doing their own thing, you know what there's I mean? Some psychedelic lights and the psychedelic crazy, drugs man. as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there was people lost in the woods. <laughs> it was whatever. <laughs> Do your thing, you know? I bet, yeah. It was a little bit similar. I feel like it's probably scaled down a little bit 
at PCT days, but there was definitely some lost some lost people. I met a couple people that were hiking the AT, but somehow ended up at PCT. Day. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably though, for all they knew, uh, I didn't stay in the tent city though. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, and I and I don't plan on doing it at AT. I already it have an Airbnb. It was very like, quiet starting at 10 o'clock. If you can believe that. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Dude, I don't think... I thought I was going to be up till like 6 in the morning and just be pissed off to no end. But like 10 o'clock, they say it's like quiet, or I think it's 11 maybe. It's quiet hours. And on the dot, man, every single... Both nights that we were there, at least, it was quiet. Wow. Didn't have a damn problem with anybody. Maybe I should have done it. I mean, I'm going to be recording some podcasts and stuff, so there's more to it for why I booked an Airbnb. But that that is that scared me. I'm not gonna lie. Even last yeah. <laughs> year, I could have stayed there last year too in the tent city. I didn't want to. Maybe it's a little bit. It depends when you're where your where your tent is located. Because yeah, like the, that's the, fair. The, the rowdy, the riffraff section is what it's called, and then the yeah, the field. That's fair. Yeah. The field. I think a little bit too. Just I'm gonna sound like a total pompous fucking ass here, but um, <laughs> a little bit too because like. I'm gonna get recognized at trail days a decent amount, and so uh, me too. that makes me yeah. a little that makes me feel a little bit weird, like camping with a bunch of people who there's a chance they might know who I am, and I, I, I'm like there, like fucking getting out of my tent to piss in the middle of the night, and someone's <laughs> like, "Oh my god, dude, I watched that guy on YouTube. His dick's tiny." Um, no, <laughs> dude, I'm 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 being a degenerate in this episode, like more than usual. This is great. Um, wow. I love it. Um, okay, let's get back on track here. Um, okay, so we've talked a lot about like what you're gonna do differently, maybe this time on the PCT in terms of like gear and maybe some of the mental stuff. Um, how about? Obviously, you were a pretty experienced backpacker even before you did the AT. But um, what are some things, some like long distance through hiking specific things that you think you did well on the AT? that you plan on doing again on the PCT? And, and I know that might be a little bit of a tricky question. So if you need a second to like brainstorm or think about it too, that's totally fine. See, I thought I did a lot of things wrong on the AT, which I'm now taking and learning for the PCT to do it better. Okay. For instance, I think I had just absolute shit garbage food the entire AT. <laughs> and by like... I want to say Vermont, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, that that around that area toward the end of PA, I guess. I was just I was just so tired and like constantly on a sugar crash every single minute of the day. And I, I've kind of went back to the drawing board with my food and you know add more protein, add more uh, you know carbs, less uh, less sugars, less uh, Snickers. You know I hate to say it, I love Snickers, but I think that was a, a big learning experience for me because now I have all this energy, you know, eating more rice and tuna and just more protein in general just makes me feel better throughout the day. Yeah, um, man. I was I was just up at uh, today we were talking. I was just up doing some conditioning hikes at my park and I did 20, 20 miles by two forty five. You know, I started at eight o'clock. Nice. And I was just like, wow, that was. Where to, where to go? You know, I put in some headphones and just rocked it. And I just, I felt so much better just eating good food. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't, I think the, you know, having hiked the AT has taught me a lot of what not to do. You know, it was a good example yeah. of what, how not to through hike. <laughs> I made it just hey. by the sheer grace. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like that's the case for a lot of people though. I I'm think sure. you give yourself some more credit. Um yeah, the food thing is interesting because I had a similar, I, I felt similarly after the AT and maybe I didn't feel quite as strongly about it as it sounds like you do maybe, but um, going into the PCT, that was a goal of mine was to eat a little bit healthier and I feel like that goal went out of the window yeah, <laughs> pretty quick. Said, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard this a lot and, I, and to be fair, I, I'm not I'm not doubting you, like I'm not trying to say that you won't do it or whatever, but um, I... <laughs> I just I don't know. For me, it was harder than it was to just kind of say it, I guess. And so yeah. I, I hope that you're able to stick with it because food is genuinely like one of the hardest parts about through hiking. Because I, right. even though I did kind of fall off in terms of trying to eat healthy, um, I, 
I didn't like it. Like I don't like eating unhealthy food. I was so, so sick of the food by the end of the PCT. Yeah. And when I think about future through hikes, that's one of the biggest things that I dread is going back on that diet. So if you come up with any revolutionary system or even just a couple tips to eat a little healthier while you're out there, like, man, I'm all ears for sure. And we'll have to talk about it in a follow up episode. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, man. Um, Story time. We're getting towards the end here. Oh, yeah. I challenge you. I challenge you to not only come up with a story for the end of the episode, but I challenge you to come up with one that you haven't told on camera. Were you able to think of that? Or am I, I going to make was, you look like an I, asshole right I did, now? Oh, I you are. Okay, good. And we'll good. see how people react to this one. Cause <laughs> oh, boy. We'll it can go either way. All right. Okay. So we talked about me. Uh, I went with my dad to uh, flew into Vegas and we hiked the, the Grand Canyon. Um, we originally had planned a, you know, a three day, very aggressive, uh, first day. And then, you know, kind of go down to the Colorado river and come back up. We got scared away from doing that aggressive loop by another hiker that's been hiking there for like 40, 50 years. Um, my dad also told me that he was afraid of heights when we got there. Um, <laughs> when so we landed. Of, yeah. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I'm afraid of heights. Well, you know, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Uh, briefly when I was a kid, not, you could die very there. easily in the Grand Canyon, yeah. falling off the areas that we were, we were in, but people, uh, anyway. people have, <laughs> I've oh, seen I'm the sure. articles and stuff. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the first day, our real first day, we got down to the Colorado river. We stayed on this beautiful like beach, Colorado rivers, you know, raging after all the rain that they had. It was October, I think. Saw mm-hmm. white rotter rapids and everything. And we were having... Uh, we, we had just had dinner, me and my dad, uh, sharing some moments, you know what I mean? Just kind of BSing back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And this mouse comes out of this like little fire pit thing, runs across my shoe. And I look at my dad, I was like, there's a mouse here. It's like getting dark. I'm like, we only have our DCF bags. We don't have like a uh, bear canister or an op sack or anything like that. I'm looking around, there's no trees. It's the freaking beach. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we go to bed. Right, and this fucking mouse <laughs> <laughs> bothered us all night long. At one point, I had to open my food bag just to let him in and do whatever he needed to do. There was no <laughs> hiding food from this thing. Um, at three in the morning, I I felt like this this like smacking thing in my face, and I turned on my headlamp, and the mouse was crawling up the Plex Solo like mesh like for the door. You know what I mean? Like the screen for the door. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what are you doing? There's no food at the top. Of, like, what are you, po-? like the food <laughs> bag is open. Just get what you want to do. And I'm like, I got to do something about this mouse. Or I'm going to be tired hiking out of this thing. Right. So I remembered an episode of, I don't know if you're familiar with Les Stroud or Survivor Man at all back in the day. Yeah. Remember yeah. when he was on a beach and he caught a lizard or something out of a, a hole in the ground that he dug in the sand or something like that. Maybe it was the desert. But I was like, I'm going to do that same thing and just trap this mouse in here. And I was like, this isn't going to work, but it's, I'm, I'm desperate. It's three in the morning. I just want to sleep. So I'm sitting there at three in the morning and I'm making all this noise. He's like, Jason, what are you doing? Like says my dad. And I was like, I'm going to catch this fucking mouse. And that's going to be the end of this thing. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that mouse is, the mouse is running into my food bag too. I'm like, great. So like this thing had got oatmeal snickers bars cheese it had gotten literally everything it had like a thousand calories that night yeah (laughs) so i i dig this uh dig this hole out for this mouse and put the bag in with a couple peanuts right in the morning i finally wake up you know it was like three hours later the mouse is in the fucking bag (laughs) i caught the mouse and it that was it that was the only thing (laughs) <laughs> that stopped it was me digging this stupid hole and catching the mouse in the bag and it couldn't get back up because I line it with a Ziploc. That is epic, dude. And then that I stomp it out. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love but it. But I figured they're an invasive species. You know what I mean? They're just, they're wreaking yeah, havoc at this them. beach. They needed to be dealt with. But. Yeah. I'm not saying people should go out mouse hunting on trail. No, absolutely not. But in I'm this not going to lie. There's been a couple just... There may or may not be a video of me in my underwear when I was 16 at a shelter on the long trail chasing mice around with the broom <laughs> from the shelter. I probably wouldn't do that nowadays, I'm not going to lie, but uh, 16-year-old Kyle had 
had other plans. Um, so yeah. <laughs> super funny, dude. Um, thank you, man. Let's stay in touch. I'm really excited. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I feel for you right now. Like what a, just a crazy time and yeah, twisted there's nerves, but yeah. dude, it's, it's so exciting at the same time, man. So I, I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to see the videos. And, um, speaking of those videos, dude, like where can people go, uh, go check out your channel and where can people go follow you for the, for the through hike this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the videos will be posted on YouTube. So Frozen's Outdoor Adventures and then Frozen's Outdoor Adventures also on Instagram. I'll be posting probably hopefully daily, depending on signal. Yeah, so. man. I will have a link to that in the show notes and in the description and stuff. Thank and you. so, dude, thank you, man, for coming on here. So sick. And we'll have Anytime, to do a, 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 a follow up episode after you get home. How's that Absolutely. sound? Absolutely. That sounds fun. All right, man. And thank you so much to everybody uh, who, who listened and watched this. Dude, you made it all the way to the end. You got to subscribe to that. I'm talking to you, listener and watcher. That's a great way to get people to to join your causes by pointing at them and going, fuck you, dude. Subscribe to my. <laughs> I appreciate all of you so much. I had a lot of fun with this one. And um, I'll see you next week. So thank you so much, everybody. Boom. All right. Well done, my friend. 